I meet Jake Ruta. Um, Jake is an e-commerce and Amazon marketing specialist. Um, he specializes in selling physical products online and developing advanced marketing strategies that compete with the world's top selling brands. And he's managed the stores of over 150 Amazon sellers in the last five years. So as you can, guys can imagine, he knows what it takes to be successful on Amazon. So without further ado, Jake, um, how you doing, man? I'm okay. I'm, it's really hot and I'm sweating and... I'm taking shower three times a day, and it's crazy. So, yeah, how's UK? The UK is um, it's fine. Um, the weather's been a little bit um, iffy um, for the last few days. I can't lie to you. It's been sunny, then it's been raining, sunny, raining. But I'm, I'm giving it a few weeks, and it'll be back to the, the summer that we all know. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, okay. thank you for, for j- I'm jumping on the call, man. I really, really appreciate sure. it. Um, I'm really so- honored to be here. So, thank you for the invite. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, so for those that are on the call right now, again, you are muted for the purpose of the audio. So I'll only leave Jake um, unmuted. But um, I think that I've, this time I've allowed you guys to unmute yourself. But what we'll do is that we'll, I'll literally run through a bunch of questions that I've sent Jake and who will answer them. And any questions that you guys may have after the fact, um, you guys can just literally jump on board and um, ask during a live Q&A. Is that cool? Um, let me know if you guys are good at that. Um, give me like a thumbs up in the chat, etc. So I know that we can communicate along the way. That'd be amazing. So um, without further ado, um, Jake, I think that it would only makes sense if we start this call by literally having you explain like, your background story. Like, who, who is Jake Ruta? Um, how did he get started? What are you doing? Sure. Um, I started about like five years ago um, when I have discovered the, the whole Amazon world, uh, you know, how to, how to sell on Amazon. You know, I started to learn. I started to see the opportunity behind it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted, you know, at that point, I wanted to know uh, how you can actually go and start with your own, you know, business on the internet. Um, I was at that point, I was a student. I was 21 years old. Um, Haven't got a lot of capital to invest, you know, so I had to be a little bit more, you know, smarter uh, to approach everything. Uh, So basically in a couple of months, I started with my first private label product. I sold out um, around 30 or 40 units, I think, in seven days without any review. Yeah. Uh, so that was actually at that time where you can, it's, it was a lot more freedom uh, and Amazon allowed you a lot, you know, more other stuff to do than right now. Um, so basically then I started with my second product uh, that I ordered 100 pieces. And it was also sell. Uh, I think it was like 14 days, and we sell out those uh, 100 pieces as well. And then I found a, a business partner when we actually started the real thing, you know, the real private label um, product, uh, which was like you know having our own logo on the product, you know, using some influencer for some photo shooting, doing all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we're doing pretty good. At that point, when I wanted to be too greedy and I wanted to have too much at a short amount of time, so I screw up things. And I was actually, I screw up things so much that my business partner left the business and uh, I owned Amazon (laughs) $8,000 because of that. Uh, So I had to quit. I had to find, you know, a job to pay out, you know, because I was broke. I didn't have all the money and stuff like that. So uh, I think about like three years ago, one of my very good friend and my mentor uh, said, you know, you have some Amazon experience, you know, why, you know, would you like to, you know, provide me your knowledge? What do you have? And would you like to, you know, launch my product on Amazon? Uh, and I said, of course, I mean, sure. You know, he, he's basically from Slovenia as I am, you know, for those who don't know where Slovenia is, is basically, a very small country. Uh, I am at the Italian border, so eastern, you know, east from Italy, Slovenia. Uh, so he is basically from, you know, my country. Uh, he's selling in, in Amazon.com still, and that was actually the, the the decision that I wanted to become a consultant. And uh, up until now, basically, I have I have worked with over 150 sellers. I have partnership with um three amazon businesses right now one of them is established in uk at this moment 
the other one that is basically my primary uh, one is in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and we are doing about $35,000 a month with just one product. So we are doing pretty good and we are just about to launch a second product, which will um, have our goal is to reach $50,000 a month with the second product by the end of this year. So um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. um, um, I just want to um, use this opportunity to say thank you for sharing a um, bit of your story, especially like some of the downtime. Because, you know, especially in this online world we're living right now, a lot of people will share their highlights, but you've managed to kind of like just share some of the some of the, the down things that's happened to you along the journey with regards to you being in debt for eight thousand pounds. And we're happy to see that you didn't let that debt get you down and you um pursue things and you um um have like, literally um grown your consulting business to the stage. So thank you again for sharing that. Um sure. what I yeah, would, basically if I will if I can just add just one more thing. Yeah. Um when when you're so broke that you don't have, you know, you have family to feed. Yeah. And you don't have, you know, uh, you know, you need to pay out, you know, to Amazon and all that stuff. You don't have money to do all of that. And when you start working like 12, 16 hours a day just to pay out and just to have something to eat, uh, then you start to realize and then all the motivation and everything goes up automatically because you want to, you know, put an end into this. Uh, so in every business, there is a, a downside. So in every business, there's going to be problems. Uh, if you're strong enough and you, if you're willing to solve this problem, then you're going to be successful. That's what I have learned the hard way, basically. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing that last bit as well. Great stuff. Um, so at this point, um, so like what, the question I have for you right now, so what exactly um, is it that you do and how does it add value to your clients? So we know you run a consulting agency um, for Amazon sellers. So like, could you just explain what that is and, and how you add value to your clients? Uh, my main business right now is uh, to help uh, sellers to get ranked on page one on Amazon. Okay. So I take their, their product, I use social media advertisement to, uh, you know, basically I generate a special design URL uh, queries where I send people from outside to, of Amazon to Amazon that they click and buy the product. And with that, we improve certain things on Amazon so that we actually land up on page one organically okay. and minimize the amount of you know, ad uh, advertising costs that we need to invest for every uh, product that's been selling on Amazon and to split basically the sales 80% that will actually be, you know, 80% of them are uh, coming like organically and 20% are, you know, advertised. So this is basically what I do. Well, primary at this point. Okay. Okay. Cool. So basically, so what you're saying is that you literally help Amazon sellers with regards to their um, ranking on page one. So um, what does ranking on page one mean for Amazon sellers? Like, what does that do? How does that boost their business? Um, that actually means that you are, you know, especially when you have, let's say, for example, uh, a supplement product, you know, like probiotics or, or, you know, vitamin D or whatever it is, uh, where there is a high demand. Okay, um, and basically, if you get ranked on page one, uh, Amazon will show that your product to everyone that will search for the vitamin D product. You know, you have some, you have special um, keywords uh, that you have. Also, you know, some uh, we are using a software that is uh, showing you the, the search volume, and then you actually decide which one is the biggest one. So you want to be there where where people are searching and buying the product. Uh, the result of all of that is basically that you just sit and relax and sales to, you know, will come up automatically without doing anything. Okay. You know, that's the, the main thing that we are doing right now. Okay, cool. So I can see how that can add value. So um, the next question I have for you is that, um, so what, okay, first of all, what is Amazon FBA? Why Amazon FBA? And could you explain the pros and cons? So you can start. The first question is, what is Amazon FBA? Amazon FBA, it's uh, one of the concepts uh, that Amazon provides. We have, you know, if we go into, into very detail, you know, FBA means fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah. Uh, so, you, you know, all of us probably know that Amazon is the biggest, mar you know, online marketplace uh, in the world. And the main thing why they became big is just because of the, the, the most advanced logistics system they have in the world. 
that means that you can actually send your product to Amazon Fulfillment Center. And they're gonna, you know, especially in the US, um, if you order a product that is FBA fulfilled, you can get it in two days, no matter where you live in the United States. If you live in Hawaii and you order it, you're gonna get it in two days. If you order a car on Amazon and you have Prime account, of course, and you uh, select today shipping, you're gonna get the car in two days, no matter where you live. So this is the, the most you know, advanced logistics system. And that is basically the, the, the rough ex explanation what Amazon FBA is. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so basically what you're saying is that um, the why behind Amazon FBA as well, because it, it kind of adds to the demand of the customer today. So demand, people, customers want things quickly and Amazon is the best with regards to the logistics. Um, Correct. And delivery. Correct. Okay. People, when people are buying online, they want to have stuff fast. You know, Amazon has also... Uh, implemented and you know it's in the beta mode uh, but they are testing out one day shipping and they're going to use drones to deliver you the product the same day you know that you actually order in some uh, cities in some bigger cities uh, and especially if you live close to some fulfillment centers in the United States it's already a possibility that you can actually go and order one day shipping um, but, you know, in the future, I would say in the next five, maybe 10 years, this will become a standard. So okay. you can actually order product on Amazon and you're going to get it the same day. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so um, are you able to share like, the pros and cons of the Amazon FBA? Because I'm sure that every business model has its pros and cons, right? Of course, yeah. of course. Uh, I would start with, with, with cons, basically. Um, Amazon is uh, very strict when it comes to their policies and they can actually ban you and close your account without any reason, without any explanation, without anything at all. They can just, you know, decide if you, um, especially if you became a, a bigger threat to, you know, uh, to Amazon, uh, to, to those products that has been shipped and sold by Amazon, uh, they can easily shut your account down. Uh, that's the con, the biggest con, basically, that they have control of everything. If you're selling on Amazon and make, you know, and if you're making one million dollars in sales per month, that doesn't mean that it will stick forever. Okay. That's the biggest con. Uh, the biggest um, advantage, basically, and the biggest positive side, is that you can actually enter the market uh, very easily with uh you know not so so much of an effort um and you can actually become a millionaire very fast with amazon i have seen uh people started and becoming uh you know having one million dollars in sales in, in the first 12 months of you know operating on amazon uh so it's very easy to make money and yeah. it's also very easy to lose money so <laughs> you sense. know Okay, yeah. cool. So um, just, just, on, just on that point, before we move on on that point, so from your perspective then, so um, what is your overall strategy with regards to Amazon? So I know a lot of people look at Amazon as their, as their bill and end all of their business. So would you say that with that being in mind, that someone has to have an overall strategy, meaning that we're using Amazon as a platform as opposed to that's your business? So do you recommend people start off with Amazon and then figure out how they can um, leverage other platforms where, where they can get more control? Or like, how, do, how would you go about something like that? Yeah, definitely. I would, if someone will, you know, come to me and say, I want to start with, you know, selling products, physical products online, I would definitely say, you know, go to Amazon first. Okay. You can uh, basically, you know, make money that you can invest, build, you know, to build up your brand, uh, which we are going to come up later, you know, talking a little bit about the brand okay. um, and, you know, doing all that stuff uh, to actually you know, expand and scale much faster, much more effective when you start with the Amazon business first. Okay. Uh, the margins, are, you know, are going to suffer because basically Amazon is taking away 15% plus the FBA fees, which are, you know, ju they're just raising and raising and raising up those numbers. Um, so it, for, you know, for some products, it has become ridiculous basically to even sell it on Amazon. When you have when you're selling on Amazon for seven dollars and your costs, you know, of uh, you know fifteen percent and FBA costs are actually five dollars and you only have two dollars to play with, it's not much to do. 
Um, so uh, yeah, basically that's it, okay. more or less. Okay, guys, I just, I just want to um, give a reminder. If you guys have any questions as you're listening to this, please, um, you can ready, you can have a ready it um, by yourself. You want to unmute yourself during the Q and A. You can ask, or you can um, write in a chat. And when it comes to the Q live Q and A, I'll ask um, Jake on your behalf. So yeah, just moving on. So um, what is so the next question I have is so what are the biggest hurdles one must overcome to get from starter to running a profitable store? Learning, <laughs> especially learning. Yeah. That's the biggest, you know, learning and being patient, I would say. Okay. Uh, patience is the, the key to success on Amazon. You know, a lot of people are actually giving up too soon. I have noticed that out of those 150 sellers that I was working with, I think that like at least 75% wanted to quit and I have changed their minds not to. Yeah. And for those who continued and who actually, you know, get up and, you know, get some capital to invest a little bit more, you know, just to break through that wall, um, they are now successful. So patience and, um, you know, learning and, you know, seeing the data, uh, know how to, um, know how to uh, read the data, especially, and optimize things accordingly. Uh, is the um, that's the biggest overcome everyone needs to go because uh, if you know uh, if you're spending too much on the advertisement and you realize that you are that your conversion rate is very low that it's not the problem in advertisement that's the problem in the in the listing basically that um, that, that that person has on Amazon so okay. uh, stuff like that so what you're saying, basically taking time to the, the learning curve, you have to take time to understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, Correct. Um, I know that that's, that's something that me and you are working on. And again, a quick plug, guys. So um, like I said, if you guys just came in just now, I know one person might just come now. We're working on like an all-in-one e-commerce course where all of the information gets about how to start. Um, we'll be sharing that for free. So um, stay to the end and then we'll share some information about that and how we can um, understand how we can best help you. So um, look out for that link at the end. Um, okay, cool. So the next question, and I know we spoke about branding just now. So how does one go from prof um, from a profitable FBA store to scaling a profitable physical product brand? Now, um, for those who are listening, and um, that just to kind of clarify what that question means is that on Amazon, because I've sold on Amazon as well, sold on eBay, etc. Um, it's very very easy for us to be like commoditized, right? on Amazon, like just seen as a number because we haven't got an a avenue to kind of like reach out to customers. So if from that stage where, where you say, you know what, we're doing really, really well now, let's say you're doing hundred K a month for uh, like what some of your clients are doing. How does one say, you know what? Okay. How can I create a brand from this now? What, what are the steps one has to take? First off, I think the research and getting yourself ready is the most important thing. If you have a product that will sell well, that you can actually make the money to invest to more inventory, invest into more marketing, invest into the you know, ranking strategies and all that, um, it's basically the first thing you need to do. Uh, knowing the customers, you know, knowing, having, you know, um, reading down the buyer persona, uh, probably for some of for, for some of those who don't know what the buyer persona is that's basically your perfect customer you need to visualize how what your perfect customer is you know what gender um, what uh, age group uh, where does it live what are you know how where does it work what is you know the um, where, where did they go for the you know school what is the degree that they finished uh, what is their hobbies, interest, you know, stuff like that. Everything put on the paper, you get the buyer persona. So having a buyer persona will also have um, a thing that you need to have before you actually, you know, uh, do any branding. And then, of course, the learning curve, you need to have, you know, you need to actually get the, the advertising in place. You need to have profitable business established. You need to take some time, develop on your reviews. On Amazon and eventually you, uh, when you land on page one when you do you know um, when a lot of a lot of people actually sees you on page one then you can go do some influencers do some you know social media presence build up your own website 
uh, you know, uh, someone will actually just take care just for your Instagram account, for example, just posting images on Facebook, just posting, you know, posts regularly every day. Um, and that's how you can actually build up the brand, you know. Uh, the last part that we actually, that I did with one of the, one of the clients, one of the best selling uh, client I work with is a distribution. So you need to go, you know, the, the physical stores are still very powerful, yeah. especially the bigger, the big ones. Um, I don't know, in UK, there are, you know, others than in US. In US, maybe you have like Walmart, for example, or like uh, Costco or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, the next, the last stage is basically to go negotiate and put your product into those stores. That's one, you know, like the biggest, the most advanced uh, strategy you do at the end. And then you just take the money and that's it. <laughs> and you invest in your new products and then invest in your new product, new product, new product. And that's how you can scale up your brand where you can offer a lot of, you know, a, a huge catalog of products that will actually make you money. Okay. That's it. So, um, so just from that, so um, it sounds like you're saying that you start very, very um, small. So you start with one product. So you, you wouldn't recommend starting with many products. You start with one product, build it up. One product, yeah. correct. Exactly. Correct. Figuring about how. Basically, th this is the, I'm following, I was, since I started this, I always followed the lean startup methodology. For those who don't, never heard about this, yeah. um, I think that the, the author is uh, Eric Kreis or something like that. Uh, it's called the Lean Startup. Yeah. Okay. I would definitely recommend that book. And they, he also have podcast. And I think that uh, another guy, you know, has redo the book with the 2.0 version, which is a little bit more advanced. I don't know the name of that guy, but if you just follow the Lean Startup, if you find it on Amazon, yeah, or whatever it is, I would definitely recommend for everyone that wanted to start with Amazon business uh, to read that book first. Okay. Uh, it's the, just the explain the way how you can actually uh, reduce all the costs that are unnecessary at the beginning and just focus on the ones who are truly have value at the beginning. Yeah. And when you scale up, then you can invest into a lot of other stuff. So that's why I recommend one product, keeping, you know, having all your focus on that product, developing well, get the reviews. And eventually when your sales are consistent, I would recommend, let's say, for example, 20 to 25 sales a day, the pencils, the price, the type of the product and everything. You go and move, you know, you know, launch another product. And then you actually, when you build up a nice catalog of products, then you go outside, do the influence marketing and all that stuff that I explained before. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So thank you for clarifying that. Okay. So um, the next question I have for you is that, um, so we've mentioned two stages now. So I asked you, okay, so from a beginner, someone that has to learn, et cetera, to one of those um, profitable um, Amazon business to a person that is running a profitable Amazon business to scale in. So what are the, the capital requirements for both stages? So first of all, if I'm a beginner, like how much capital do I need to be investing in? And taking on board that lean approach that you just mentioned, um, how much do I need to start? If you can offer it? I think that, you know, I started with basically a hundred euros okay. five years ago. For now, I don't think that's possible anymore, especially if you're serious about your brand and about your business, yeah. you need to have a little bit more capital because yeah. the launch right now, the Amazon launch is very important. If you can invest a little bit more money at the beginning where you don't have a lot of sales history, uh, I forgot to mention that basically Amazon has the, what we call the A9 algorithm that controls most of the Amazon stuff. So it tracks your behavior. It, you know, it tracks your metrics. It's, you know, uh, basically displays your product based on the metrics that you have. And at the beginning, when you don't have the, you know, those metrics, basically the history behind it, if you didn't do any stupid things or whatever it is, um, Amazon can reward, can re reward you to get on page one and to get good results much faster, much easier, you know, much efficient than you would do with more established product that has some problems in between. So that's why I recommend to go and have like 5,000 pounds or dollars basically, or euros, for whatever you are, yeah. uh, I think would be enough. And I added a little bit more security into it. So having like four or 5,000 pounds 
will be tall enough to launch the first product success, uh, successfully. Okay, cool. So thank you for sharing that and um, your honest um, um, opinion on that. And um, the second thing as well, so from a perspective, let's say, okay, I started this business and I started with £4,000 and I get it to a place where it's doing £50,000 a month now. Um, how, um, like just from your experience, uh, how much capital does one need to invest or to raise to get to the level where they can scale and kind of even get to the over the 100K mark a month and um, scale to an actual like a, a national known brand, for example? When you do Amazon advertising, Amazon native advertising, we call it PPC advertisement, um, you actually earn money when you're spending, you know? So, you know, you, it's, it's the same way the Amazon PPC, it's designed a very similar way um, to uh, Google ads, Google search ads. So actually put the keywords and then you bid on them and then you get sales and every 14 days Amazon takes away the advertising cost from you and what is actually left they transfer you to your bank account so you actually don't invest in you know uh, you don't give them the money they just reduce you from the amount you earn you know you make on Amazon yeah. um, away this is very good when you want to scale up and when you want to have you know uh, um, basically get your business to the next stage um, now with 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 my you know with with the company in toronto that i work with um it's basically now we almost came to the uh point when we will have to uh when amazon ppc will not be enough for us anymore you know we'll have to do some other uh traffic source to actually get that so that becomes very tricky how much to invest really depends on a lot of factors but i would say 15% of all of the, you know, at least 15% probably will um, have to be invested into further marketing from all the profit we get. Okay. Okay. This is what we are usually aiming for having 15, maybe 20% um, and not going too much into it because otherwise it will nothing will be left for the new inventory for us, you know? So I, you know, always aim for about 15 to 20% to all of the sales needs to go back to market okay. to continue scaling up. Okay, definitely. So def we invested into marketing at that stage. So the first stage, um, 5,000 pounds is what you recommend. It was 100 euros or 100 pounds back then. But now yep. in the advanced platform, et cetera, and the competition, you believe um, 5,000 pounds, 4,000 to 5,000 pounds is ideal. And to grow your business from a profitable state to a, like a national brand, et cetera, you um, recommend 15 to 20% of, we invest in 15 to 20% of profits, right? Back in Correct. Time. Correct. Just for example, you need to look at, at the Coca-Cola brand. Okay? okay. That's a perfect example. The Coca-Cola brand, let's say, for example, uh, a bottle of Coke, of Coke actually cost, let's say, just for example, one pound. How much do you think Coca-Cola is investing back to marketing? 65 pennies okay. out of one pound, you see? Yeah. And Coca-Cola is the biggest brand in the world. So if they're doing it, why should we do it? Okay. Of course, you need to do it. You know, you always need to invest to scale. You can always get the m more money, you know, more and more money if you have, let's say, a small portion, so, uh, you know, for example, for the Coca-Cola example, you have 35% is your margin. Yeah. All the rest, you know, goes to, you know, marketing, you know, tax and all that stuff. Let's say 35% goes to you, 35% out of the 1,000, you know, it's 350, right? Yeah. And if you go to a million, it's 350,000. So you can still make good money, yeah. but you always need to invest in marketing to get to that level. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, cool. I hope, I hope everyone's following. And um, again, if you have any questions, um, I'm, I think I'm down to my last question, my last two questions. So everyone, if you do have any questions, please read them. Um, so the next question I have for you is that, um, obviously you've worked with over 150 clients in the past five years and helped launch numerous physical product brands. So from your experience, what is the common denominator of Amazon FBA success? That's basically, I, I would say that's a hard question also, you know, to, to ask me. 
every product is unique. Uh, no matter if, you know, I would say um, you have, I don't know, um, garlic press, for example, and you have two completely the same garlic presses. And you would put on Amazon under the same account using the same images, the same copy, the same price, everything. Uh, they will not perform equally the same. You know, that's basically, um, I would say, not maybe not the positive side, but that's a unique side on Amazon uh, that you know um, that that Amazon actually have that not everyone will ever be successful with the same product. Uh, some of them will make millions. Some of them, you know, will make uh, just like, you know, um, 10,000, maybe, for example, stuff like that. Um, but I would say the biggest um, uh, denominator, uh, I think it's the, you know, the willingness to succeed, you know, the, 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 um, uh, the willingness to test, to adopt, to, you know, adopt the market, not that the market will adopt you um you know stuff like that but like i said you know every product is unique as long as you read the data as long as you know how to read the data you're gonna be successful okay thank you i don't on just on that note so like do you offer any like online coaching training for those interested in improving their personal or just like improving what's it called their or wanted to start a amazon fba business i provide coaching services yeah. I, uh, you know, like I said, I was working with 150 clients. I provided my coaching services. Uh, I was working with five best-selling brands. I helped one brand in UK to become the best-seller brand in the supplement category in UK right now. Um, so, yeah, definitely I do. But the online course, it's still not yet ready so that's it's on the way that's fine and I, and I know that obviously we're collaborating on stuff as well so um that will be available for 18 members as well so um i look forward to us doing that so okay at this point um i want to kind of like hand over to individuals that are on the call right now so if you guys have any questions for um jake then feel free to ask um literally yeah i'll, I'll hand over the floor to you guys let me know okay one second Okay, so um, Stephanie asks, how do you find the right first product to sell on Amazon? There's so much out there currently. You need to use um, certain software to do that. Um, I think you've heard about Jungle Scout. They're, you know, the biggest one to do actually the, 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 the product research on Amazon. Um, it is true. I think there is, I forgot about the number. I know that in 2015, there were over 2.5 million products on Amazon. I think that this number has at least doubled since then. Um, so basically, if just, just to start somewhere, okay, uh, I can maybe give you, a, you know, a few tips. Uh, avoid electronics a little bit, you know, for the first product, maybe it's not like the, the best you know, idea. Uh, definitely avoid supplements. It's too saturated. Definitely avoid clothes, uh, you know, clothing category. Uh, too saturated. You are never get, get a chance to get something out of it. Um, I would recommend you to go sports and outdoors. Uh, baby products, pet products are also quite good. Maybe toys and games, but those products are more or less, um, you know, a brand and the, and the big brands are taking away most of the uh, most of the market share um, and maybe some beauty products will also be quite good even if it's saturated the margins are pretty good there so you can start with that and uh, you know make sure when you do the product research that the product has enough margin that you can actually make some money not that you will actually break even or lose money because you're going to be out of business sooner than you think okay I hope that helps. Um, um, so SK, he says that, is it cost effective to initially focus on one product or start with a few and see which one performs the best? No, I would definitely start with one product. Uh, I would never do this type of uh, business model, this type of a strategy uh, for my clients because you need to do the homework first and the homework is product research. 
Yeah. If you want to put a few products out there just to test out which one's going to, you know, perform the best, you need to realize that you need to buy inventory for every each one of them. You need to have at least a few inventory, not just five of them, because if you ran out of stock, that's the dumbest thing you will ever do on Amazon. So you need to have stock. You need to keep up with stock. Otherwise, your, your, you know, your metrics are going to suffer. Um, and it's definitely the best, the most important thing to do the homework before you actually launch with product number one. And you need to double check and make sure that that product will be a good selling product for you. Perfect. Um, SK then continues, follow-up question was, how in-depth does the product research have to um, need to be? And what is the most cost-effective way to assemble stock? So the first question is, how in-depth does the product research need to be? As much as you can. The more data you have, the better. Okay. Um, the second question he asks is, what is the most cost-effective way to assemble stock or store it? Um, I think I can answer that. You, you, yeah. you, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll allow you to answer the question. I'm not sure I understand. Um, I think that he, he's asking about how, how much would, it, would you need to actually get uh, what will be the minimum cost to actually go and uh, get the product. Um, basically, from my, from my uh, experience, using the private label product is dealing with Chinese manufacturers directly. Uh, the one thing you need to know about the Chinese manufacturer is that they have the MLQ, the minimum order quantity. The minimum order quantity, usually it's 500 or 1,000 per right. single product. If you can get lucky, you can you know, lower down by half. So let's say if they have like 500 as an MLQ, you can get, go down as 250. I think that from 100 to 250 will be enough for you to actually test out how the product works on Amazon. Yeah. I can guarantee you that you're gonna sell all of those 100 or 250 pieces. It depends on you know, of the timeline, but I can guarantee you will never, uh, what, for whatever product you have, I seen the, the most dumbest product on, you know, in this, on this world, selling at a lot of, you know, for a lot of money, for a lot more than they should, and they were still selling. And I can guarantee that that this way you can sell out if you know that product turns out to be good, you continue buying it, you know you continue uh, having keeping up with stock. If it doesn't you know turn out to be good, if you you, lo you know lost too much money, then just kill it, move on to another product. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, and I'm just in that point as well, I feel like I'm um, just for those asking though, because I know I've had experience with this as well. Um, so I know that in order for me to find out what sells, I drop ship and, um, initially. So I use drop shipping as a way that's inexpensive for me, no inventory needed to figure out what's selling. I know it's, it's kind of different on the Amazon platform as well because um, of how much they, they pay out as well. But what's your opinion on that for those um, that think it didn't work before I um, invest in one product? Should I drop ship on Amazon or should I drop ship anywhere else to kind of get a feel of the e-commerce business before I go and um, get involved in it? So what's, what's your opinion on that? I just had a meeting with my friend Zan and he's from Boston and he's also having uh, an Amazon uh, marketing agency. Uh, we're very good friends yesterday. Um, and he said, you know, I have tried to do a little bit of drop shipping on Amazon, you know, and that stuff sucks. That's just like Amazon was just not built for that. And, you know, he's, he's actually, he's a six figure, a seven figure, uh, you know, uh, seller on, on Amazon. And he's actually, um, I think he's now uh, having uh, around $80,000 a month in sales yeah. uh, with 35% profit. And, uh, you know, when that guy says, you know, nah, this is not something, you know, that, that, that's good, uh, then definitely it's not. I mean, that's for the US part, okay? It can be very profitable if you do a good strategy. I never tried it. Yeah. I would, for me personally, I would suggest you to use Shopify or eBay as you're doing it yeah. and leave Amazon for the, you know, the real thing, the private label. Okay, that makes sense. 
Okay, cool. Um, SK has another question. So would I need to pay for storage of these products with Amazon and how much would storing products affect the bottom line? The storage, the FBA storage is calculated in the FBA fees that you actually pay with every product you sell. It depends on the size of the product, you know, but to send out, to send the, the stock to FBA is free. You don't have to pay anything. With every sale you make, you pay certain fees. It goes from three pounds to, you know, the oversized products. I don't know how, you know, um, how big the, the fees are uh, and also the weight. You know, if you have two, you know, very weight, uh, very, um, you know, uh, like um, that the weight is high for the products, you're going to pay more for the fees, you know, for FBA. Uh, but it starts with around three pounds and then it goes up. So you need to calculate that. You have, um, Ty, if you can uh, send that maybe to everyone, if you just type in on Google and search for FBA calculator, yeah, uh, that's a free tool from Amazon that you can actually calculate the, the whole cost you're gonna get with the, uh, you know, by sending products to FBA, so. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool, thank you for that. Um, does anyone else have any more questions before we um, round up the call? Um, I'll give you like a few seconds to, to ask if you do. Um, okay, I assume not. Okay, wait, is it possible to create demand? Um, so um, SK asks, is it possible to create demand? I'm not sure what you mean by that, to be honest. I think that basically, like I said before, no matter even even if if microsoft if, if you're microsoft or apple or coca-cola or whatever it is uh, i mean the biggest the big brands have some um you know ability to uh how do you call that how, I, I'm, I'm trying to to find a, a good word manipulate with people okay yeah. they can do that you know in some ways when you're small you never have a chance to do that so you always need to adapt market instead of market will adapt you. If you want to get started, if you want to be successful, trust me, you need to do that. You need to adopt the market and you need to follow up the big brands. And once you become big, you can manipulate with that. So could, you, could you clarify what you mean by um, um, adopt the market? Or, uh, what does that mean? So just for people that may not understand. That means that, let's say, for example, if you have, um, I don't know, garlic press, for example, product, yeah. that you may, you know, you, you, did, you did your homework, you realize that there is an opportunity there for your product to be a part of that piece of pie. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the demand is already there. You just enter the market and you just grab that small piece of pie that everyone else has, then you're going to be successful because that pie can grow and grow and grow. If you want to make a pie on Amazon, you will never make it. Okay, so don't reinvent the wheel, basically. So instead of you Correct. trying to reinvent the wheel, go for what's already in demand. Okay, so I think the answer is um, SK's second question. So he said that, or does a product have to have existing demand? So I think that answers his second question. Okay, cool. Um, I hope that answers your, um, everyone's questions. So um, again, thank you for jumping on the call. A quick one. So like I said in the beginning, guys, so what me, um, Jake, and every single one of the people that you have seen come jump on the call over the last week have been working on is something called the e-commerce success blueprint. So it's a freemium all-in-one course that will literally um, is designed to help answer everyone's um, queries about how to start an e-commerce. So any, everything from dropshipping, how to start, Amazon FBA, how to start um, Facebook marketing, email marketing, everything that you can think of. However, before we launch it, we thought it would only be, uh, make sense if you help us help you. So we have a um, one minute survey that we're asking every single one that's on this call and everyone that's, on, that's looking at the video via the, the replay link. Um, if you could um, take some time to answer this one minute survey, um, Sam will share that um, link right now in the chat. So um, while I'm on a call, please do that ASAP so people can have that in the link. So um, please, so the e-commerce success blueprint, um, all of the details will be um, shared by email. And if you guys are interested in being the first few people to get the access to it, um, just leave your email at the end of the survey and then you will get that um, ASAP. And yeah, Jake is gonna be on it as well. So um, 
Thank you in advance for that as well, bro. Um, so yeah, so um, again, as well as that, as always, we do feedback um, links for the whole course. If you guys enjoyed it, um, let us know how can we improve, etc. So Sam will share that right now as well. And then, um, yeah, I look forward to um, seeing how we can improve on that point. So again, finally, guys, for a round off, the A and A team stands for active, and that means active commitment today inspires victory every day. And of course, we affirm, we commit, we test, we iterate, we validate, and then we execute on our plans to make it real. I hope you guys have enjoyed the call, and I'll see you guys next week if you guys are available. All right, cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jake. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.